don't have the kernel on yet. Uh, don't see Jay on yet. I guess we can go ahead and get started. I see Jeff that you're on, Don, I see Jonathan, Kevin. Okay. Um, so welcome everybody. Um, happy Friday. Uh, so uh, in our last meeting, uh, I know we spent the whole time talking to the state of Oregon and also Washington. Uh, again, uh, very valuable input discussion there. And I know that discussion probably really spanned, scope-wise, spanned multiple subcommittees, right? But but overall, uh, very valuable to be able to, to talk through and uh, beyond just looking at the, the previous artifacts and documents that those states had created to be able to talk through live and have Q&A and so forth. Um, and so I think uh, a lot of what we've got to kind of accomplish here in a fairly short amount of time to get ready for our uh, next deliverable is to think back over that discussion that we did have um, last time with Washington and states of Washington and Oregon. And, uh, you, you know, any takeaways from those that we need to consider uh, in our final report um and uh then really have some open discussion on any additional new recommendations uh beyond what we put in the uh initial uh draft deliverable or interim deliverable a few weeks ago and kind of frame up what we think uh, we need to have in place for the final deliverable so i, I kind of two steps there i think uh, summarizing from from the last meeting's discussion, uh, adding into uh, what we had in our initial report and kind of framing up the target for our final deliverable. Uh, Jeff, I don't know if you're in a position to have any comments or if you and Allie have had any discussion, you know, kind of between meetings that you want to add to that or if, if that uh, approach makes sense to you. I apologize. I have to go run step away real quickly. Um, but no, kind of generally, I said I didn't capture all that, but generally, you know, continuing to take a look at, you know, our prioritizing maybe is also kind of some of the next steps in, in terms of looking at what we already have, as well as kind of the resource pieces. Um, you know, what is, is critical, you know, high, medium if we kind of priorities around some of those things. Um, one of the things that we talked about in the education subcommittee is getting getting out kind of a, a note, and I'll probably just bring it up here as well. Um, bear with me just a second. You know, is are there anything else we need to add to the ones that we've already got out there in terms of recommendations? Um, are there other areas, you know, based on, for example, the conversations with Washington and Oregon, are, are we still missing things from the incident response piece? Um, you know, and then again, kind of prioritizing what we already have as well. So really kind of the three pieces of moving forward, because again, really two meetings left in the subcommittees, one more full task force meeting, and then we're, we're at the end. Um, so, you know, the time is, is fairly short now. I, I think we've got a pretty good, you can sit in the, in the full task, pretty good product. Um, we're starting to get feedback in, and I know Alice sent the note out, so please feel free to share, share out. Um, and we're starting to see it hit some of the, the media outlets as well and getting some kind of input on that as well. So, no, I, I think we just can keep driving the direction we're heading because I think we're doing good work. Okay. Um, I know, Jeff, you said, I know you said you had to step away. I think we had some discussion, I don't know if I remember which meeting it was, kind of about how we frame up the final deliverable in the context of, hey, these are our initial thoughts, but you know, we're gonna need we're gonna need to have some natural follow-on steps to flesh these things out further as we go forward. And I think that's consistent even with what we heard from Washington and Oregon. Any thoughts or discussion there offline about you know what kind of uh, approach to take in this final deliverable, you, you know, in other words, not coming across as here's the answer, but rather here's the starting point to work our way towards the answer. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, if we if we can develop some of those 
um, you know, based off like that feedback, you know, here's like, and I think that kind of goes back to the prioritization. Maybe these are the ones to build first, yeah. um, you know, kind of like as, as using kind of the critical path, we need to really hit these right. heavily because these are the, the critical pieces to advance the rest of it. Um, you know, and I think some of those are in there in terms of just, you know, that communication, uh, getting out there, you know, again, having the, 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 the partnerships established, um, you know, one of the things that did come up in, in the workforce development was actually kind of coming from uh, Senator Pittman uh, was definitely or kind of around the, the ideas of, you know, getting out the resources available and then also training that the existing staff on what is out there in those places, because, you know, an incident being aware of, you know, I, and, and I know Doug was there. So please, if I miss something, please chime in. Um, you know, we all have kind of competing priorities, but they're still very much important. So if I'm the affected entity, obviously my goal is to, to restore services as quickly as possible and get things up and running. But if I bring in partners, like for example, the KBI, they have an objective of where they need to get evidence so they can pursue a case or FBI or whoever. And so how do we just kind of make sure we're communicating, coordinating that as we ask for, for assistance and these are the appropriate people to ask based on the situation. How do we communicate and train that to folks, um, you know, and, and that awareness piece, um, as well as being able to understand how to work with those partners as well. So it's not everybody stepping on everybody's toes kind of thing when we, when we're going through an incident. So, um, no, I don't know if there's more into that conversation here specifically in this group, or if that's something we kind of more broadly address with just kind of some of the outreach efforts um, or not. I, I don't know if, you know, what that looks like. Do you remember kind of what else happened with that conversation? Kind of, cause I, forgive me too, because I kind of had a small family emergency at the same time I was working through during that. It kind of highlighted that we needed an order of operations for when an incident does take place, but we really didn't get into what that looked like at the time. So I guess maybe that's a good reference point, Jeff, for a question there. So uh, to the point, yeah, we need an order of operations when an incident occurs. Is, is that a recommendation that we frame up in the final deliverable or do we take a step further uh, and actually try to, to create a, a skeleton or a template, whatever the right word might be, that, that maybe is a first cut at what that looks like? In other words, you, you know, how far do we go in this final deliverable with, with using that as an example maybe? knowing the tight time frame is can we get something out there in that time frame um you know are there places where we can make recommendations again i, I might kind of defer to some of the groups um because i know for example with at least counties kevin's group is very instrumental um you know i've got the department of revenue that's very instrumental in terms of outreach and things like that and also we've got connections through both those organizations the the kbi through their connections to the sheriff's department, but, you know, do we go as far as saying, and again, this is something kind of passing to, to KDM, Jonathan Yori, is this something where we start identifying, well, maybe the jock is the appropriate place to call for all of these, um, you know, and then maybe we can build the checklist for the jock, or is that something that the jock is not willing to take on? I don't know those questions and answers, yeah. but I don't know if that's kind of, we start making recommendations like that as kind of that next step or not. I mean, I, again, it's kind of discussion point. I, so, even, even just a loose recommendation that, hey, here's some people in the state of Kansas to contact first, as opposed to reaching out to vendors, because a lot of times the vendors are going to just start working on things and they may start deleting potential evidence before the state even gets to be aware of what the situation was. That's a good point too. Is that, do we help kind of start framing some of that or not? And again, do we start helping identify some of those points through this task force or do we kind of say, well, maybe there's another kind of, you know, taking some of the other KDEM models, another advisory committee that stood up specifically on this piece to make those recommendations. Yeah, Jeff, so this is Jonathan. I'd, I'd recommend 
um, utilizing the existing construct that counties are familiar with, and that would be making notification through the state's 24-hour emergency notification line that um, is answered by KDEM. And then um, other models that we would follow, um, you know, we'd ask baseline questions, and then we would interface with um, the appropriate emergency support function, you know, and, and in this case, um, I'm assuming it would be you or someone else in your office then that um, would delve into kind of the deeper information that you might want to know that, um, you know, somebody may be somewhat um, apprehensive, you know, to, to give to us or to give to somebody else that doesn't have the same type of um, technical expertise or, um, knowledge to to handle the information so, so i think that might be kind of like said a point to refine one of the previous recommendations um you know and and again encourage that and again there, there probably need to be some conversation after the task force to really kind of solidify and formalize that um you know i'm i don't know if you know we want to identify some of those key questions like jonathan said kind of what that intake form looks like that that should be kind of the standard um you know, and sometimes in the military, we call them nine lines. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head everything that's in it, um, but but what are the critical pieces that they need to collect and then communicate out? And again, I know they've got their their folks to communicate with and who might those be that their first notification is out of the jock, myself, the Fusion Center, uh, the, the Adjutant General is the Homeland Security Advisor. I mean, maybe trying to identify some of those might be important, um, you know, et cetera might be things we can do. Yeah, so the Joint Operations Center wouldn't be something that I would recommend because that's not 24 hours. Yeah, yeah see, I don't know the, the entire construct of everything there. Um, and, and so that that is probably something that call out and just you know, to, to Jonathan's recommendation, the, the KDM 24 seven emergency hotline or whatever. I don't know what you're, that's what you call it specifically or not. I think that's a good recommendation. Okay. So I guess kind of back to the previous discussion, uh, one of the first points was we didn't really get a chance to necessarily kind of synthesize and squeeze out the takeaways from the discussion last time with the states of Oregon and Washington. Um, I know I was reading back through those notes uh, yesterday. Uh, you know, any, I made a, a few notes from myself um, from that. Uh, in, any items there that maybe we think we didn't have covered in the initial recommendations that need to be added for the final report? Uh, anybody have anything like that? One thing that I remember seeing, I think it was Washington, um, to the discussion that uh, Jonathan, you and Jeff were just having was kind of in that process of, I'll say notifications. There was some, uh, I'll call it collisions between those that might have cyber insurance and the insurance providers not wanting any involvement or disclosure or announcements going out until they had a chance to be engaged and, and assess some. So it was kind of that that clash or collision of who do you call first? Did anybody recall that? Yeah, I recall that. And that's a, even a discussion we've had internally at some to some extent as well. And and I, that's a good question. <laughs> How do we you know, address I, that? I, yeah, I, I don't know if that's, you know, kind of too far in the weeds or, you know, too, uh, too specific of a detail to address in this report. It's kind of back to the question of how far do we go, right? But that, I mean, it certainly seems like a kind of a real thing for those that have cyber insurance, right? In, in terms of, you know, if you have it, then you certainly don't want to do something to negate the benefit inadvertently um, for sure. Uh, not all do have it. So, I, you know, it's, I was thinking about that at the time, or I, you know, I don't know, is, is that, 
is that too specific of a of a mention in in this deliverable or uh, is is it a good heads up you know for the audience that would be reading this um that's a good question i think it kind of goes to doug's point of kind of almost an order of operations um, right type thing and then just how do we address that because yeah everybody's going to be a bit unique every situation might be a bit unique um, exactly yeah all uh, right you know it's it's kind of similar to the question earlier of you know to to me a couple of templates came to mind right one is kind of that that who do i call type of you know contact list do we keep it simple at first like you were just saying with you and jonathan where it's the state 24 by 7 line and and that's the directive that goes in at this point and then there's another possibility of kind of a a, a sequence of flow around a generic incident response type of of plan or model right in terms of the steps to take whereas that sounds like kind of where this the cyber insurance uh uh you know alert or consideration might be plugged in or something it to me it's it's a matter of how how much time do we have how, how detailed do we attempt to get in terms of some initial deliverables or templates that that you know might represent a starting point for an incident right Kind of do we do we kind of focus more on on some of the internal responses so for example calling kdem you know again jonathan kind of leaning on your notification process would you want to be the ones that notify the multiple stakeholders initially or do you want another you know i don't not third party is not the appropriate person but somebody else down the line to kind of pull those key stakeholders together yeah, so I think that's something that we could kind of talk about and address as we look at, you know, what information um, we want to obtain and then where does it go. So, you know, typically if we get something that requires or will require some state assistance, um, we let those stakeholders know um, of the event um, and then kind of, you know, what some additional expectations might be with respect to um, potential state assistance that a jurisdiction might need. Um, you know, if A, B, or C were to occur, for instance, um, just to give them a heads up that, you know, we may need to be activating the State Emergency Operations Center or they may need to be doing something um, within their statutory or legal responsibilities um, within their own state agency to help support local response. So I think that's something that we could discuss um, because I also understand and imagine that there probably is going to be some additional information that everybody wants to obtain um, before we push something out more broadly, you know, because once we push something out, um, not saying anything bad, but then it has the potential to get out further because um, you don't know kind of how else that might be disseminated um, within another organization. Um, so I think it would be something that we probably just need to discuss some more. Um, and I would recommend that that in initial um, something has occurred related to cybersecurity um, notification list be relatively short. Based on kind of instance, again, I kind of leaning on your experience. I don't know if if mainly your contacts come from counties or if municipalities or critical infrastructure, but I definitely see different nexuses based on, okay, if it's county, obviously, um, you know, Secretary of State has connections with counties for elections, Department of Revenue has, you know, from the executive branch, we have connections and also from, you know, the Attorney General's office through KBI have connections, right. um, things like that. But a city, for example, does not have those connections. So do we need those different stakeholders? And again, I think, I don't know if cities contact KDM for things like that for emergencies or if it all goes yeah. through county emergency managers first, um, but again, kind of different stakeholders, depending on who's reporting, obviously, if critical infrastructure reports anything, um, that's kind of a, a whole different game in, in itself too. Um, right, so any incident, emergency or disaster that occurs that requires state assistance has to go through 
the county emergency manager um, by state law. Um, you know, in accordance to state law, emergency management agencies are established um, and legally recognized at the county level. There is a statute in there that discusses um, municipal emergency management agencies, but no municipal emergency management agencies um, have ever been created um, by the governor. Um, so it's, it's all 105 counties um, go through their respective county emergency manager to um, Kansas Division of Emergency Management. So county emergency managers in theory would have information that, or should have contact information for um, you know, their respective municipalities and push out relevant information as needed. Um, that's something that I think we also um, you know, could potentially leverage um, other state organizations or um, professional associations to help push that information out as well, um, like League of Municipalities or Kansas Association of Counties. Um, it just depends on, on what's needed. Um, for instance, you know, if we needed to have something disseminated um, to a local county health department, that's something that we would ask Kansas Department of Health and Environment to assist us with. Um, or um, law enforcement agencies across the state, that's something that we would ask um, the Highway Patrol to assist us with. And, and, and I think maybe that might be kind of the, the bigger point too, is I know, I think the strategic visioning and planning, again, kind of talking about some of those other constructs too, about getting out to the different regions, um, you know, KDHE being one of them and also uh, KDOT kind of has a way to work with the regions and regions and so does Highway Patrol, et cetera. Um, but yeah, and that that's important to note though, is that any request for, for state help usually goes through the county emergency managers. But so I guess that kind of goes back to kind of the bigger question. Okay, so what is it if it's a city that's had a major cyber attack that is kind of uh, knock them offline? How would we instruct them to still go through their county first and then call us? Or would we kind of suggest they call us directly again? Kind of going back to what's already out there versus, you know, what makes sense. Yeah, just listening to you guys talk through that, um, would that make sense then to have uh, to be, uh, and I don't know if we're, if we're going to keep the same construct, but under the near term recommendation, kind of what you were just saying, Jeff, in terms of having the county emergency managers reach out um, to, to the, the, you know, centralized state of Kansas, uh, Johnston's group, if that's the right way to say it, um, you know, and that's the near-term model. And then there's a centralized, you know, kind of an approach as to what to do next and who to call and so forth uh, to have to have kind of control and court centralized control and coordination of that and then a longer term recommendation is to is to broaden that develop it further uh you, you know to 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 make that perhaps a little less central i don't know if those are the right words a little less centralized but it's kind of a go and grow type of a model is the point i guess well, yeah and that's kind of the place i'm seeing it is is you know, we want to make sure we all we aren't violating, you know, existing if it's statute that basically says only the county emergency managers can come to the state. You know, we need to make sure that's clearly communicated, but we also need to find ways to make sure we either grow that because, you know, looking big picture. OK, what we're seeing in a lot of other states, we're seeing the school districts get hit um, and asking they're asking for assistance in some cases. I think Louisiana declared a state of emergency when they had three or four school districts hit at the same time type thing. But again, are we going to instruct school districts to reach out to the county emergency managers and we need to make sure we're communicating that out, et cetera? Or do we expand, you know, do we have some other vehicle where everybody can contact regardless of, of their level? So, so we're either not putting that additional, the county emergency manager in that place because then we're kind of in that sensitivity issue with cyber incidents. Right, right. 
could it or should it be phrased uh, in, a, in a voluntary type of way initially? Or as you know, a suggestion? Is, is that a safer way to, to go about it to your point? I think they're gonna request help if they need it regardless. Um, you know, it's, it's more kind of getting to that mandatory reporting where it's kind of, even if you don't need our help, we, we would like to know so we can yeah, track right. metrics and kind of have the awareness of what's happening in the state. Right. Um, but if it's requesting help, you know, maybe we really have two different challenges there to, to kind of discuss. Okay. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. Okay. So there's kind of, I mean, it just seems like sounds like there's a there's kind of a near term recommendation to frame up in terms of, of expectations around contact or notification right and then there might be that 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 could uh, take on more structure over time and I don't know if that becomes a long-term recommendation you know it's kind of a two-step approach and they're, and they're both in the report So now I kind of go back to Jonathan. Do, do folks kind of report things that are happening even before they directly need assistance? I mean, is that kind of something you regularly see or is it just kind of they only contact when they need assistance? Yeah, so we see it both ways. Um, you know, one of the things that is in the response plan, the Kansas response plan is um, you know, when to notify states. And that's something that we also have um, in an internal agency directive, um, you know, both of which is shared with um, county emergency management stakeholders. Um, and that is, you know, if they have a significant event that is, a, is occurring um, or projected to occur, um, that, that they notify us. Now, that's kind of in the eye of the beholder. Um, certainly we would want them to, we want them to notify us as soon as possible. It isn't necessarily, um, you know, to be all knowing, um, in a nosy way to, for lack of a better word, but it's really to give us time to, um, be able to work through the things that we need to work through. Um, you know, for instance, if somebody's having a water emergency, uh, a potable water emergency with their public water supply. And they've been dealing with it since Monday. Um, you know, that's really when we should be hearing about it instead of Friday at five o'clock because um, it's the end of the work week and people are wanting to, um, you know, go home. Um, and it's because it's, it's getting to be the weekend. Just because, you know, to get water, for instance, for um, any jurisdiction size um, isn't easy. It's not something that, you know, we have large amounts of stockpiled um, just because of shelf life. Um, so, you know, we, we have to work through that. And sometimes those things can take hours or days. Um, so, you know, that's just an example. So yes, it, we ask that, um, but it does vary on um, what we're receiving for information um, because that also varies jurisdiction to jurisdiction, you know, what they classify a significant event. It kind of goes back to the, I can't remember, Oregon, when they're talking about just the situational awareness of something is kind of starting to occur in one county and you see it affecting others, you know, you can identify something widespread. And, and again, so I think there's actual, maybe even two points to the incident, you know, definitely requests for help and just more information sharing of things happening and, and what those might look like. Okay. And so maybe that, that's an important distinction to pull out, maybe the recommendations, because I know, like I said, I know sometimes when we hear it, it's through like three different channels that something is kind of happening and not just kind of one consistent point. Now they're not necessarily asking for help per se, other than that they, they're letting us know they have somewhat issues, um, but it's like four different lines and not just kind of one single point. And then we've got, especially those smaller counties, we might have four or five agencies reaching out to the same person over and over and it just begins that kind of uh, almost counterproductive. 
So thinking about that, I was actually looking back at our initial report on that. So under long-term recommendations, we had a recommendation called create a communication model, uh, parenthetically, in a, entities to contact when the incident occurs. So it sort of sounds like, you know, that we're, we're defining kind of a near-term recommendation that says, hey, for, you, you know, at this point, then entities, I'll use that, that reference, should reach out uh, to establish situational awareness in a proactive, timely fashion, whatever the right words are. Uh, and then maybe we still have a long-term recommendation that, that just talks about maturing and expanding that model as we go forward. Am I thinking about that right? The, the, again, just my opinion, the, the two points of one, clearly the awareness piece and then definitely, you know, awareness versus actually requesting help. Right. We might want to draw a distinction again, just kind of my thoughts on that as we've been talking through it. Because I think it does also vary the stakeholders in there as well. Right. So do you think in the near term, Jeff, you, you know, Obviously, establishing awareness, uh, that's, that's foundational for lots of reasons. Uh, do we also uh, include in there uh, uh, an expectation to request help or an offer to request help? Uh, how far does that go in terms of, you, you know, guidance? Is it, is it an offer at this point for help? Is, is, is that, you know, beyond, okay, so they reach out, establish awareness. That's, that's first and foremost, important step. And then provide an offer for help. Or is it more of an expectation of help so that there's the ability to influence and help do the right things? That makes sense? Yeah, I think that might be kind of that next step is, you know, as we've talked about, somebody calls, reports, they don't specifically ask for help, but we can say, all right, here's the phone number, you know, kind of the, the response. Here's, here are your federal partners that you have available. Here are the resources available to you if they call back and ask ask for help later. Now, and maybe one of the questions, too, is in, in terms of recommendation, what Jonathan pointed out. And again, I don't want, <laughs> want to sit there and, and make recommendations for agencies, but does there need to be some sort of statute change to say for cyber incident type things that cities can reach out to KDEM or school districts or critical infrastructure can reach out without going through emergency management or do we still force force them to follow that existing construct that says they have to go through the county. Again, I'm just trying to be aware of the sensitivities. They might not want to introduce another layer in there that they don't have to. Right. I, mean, I, I can't speak for any legislative changes, but that's just not something that I see occurring. Okay. okay. At least not in the at least not in the near term. So who's the, the best person to kind of take a stab at <clears throat> what sounds like to me is defining a, a short term recommendation that maps to what we were just talking about. Um, Jonathan, don't want to offer you up. You're going to have to, I think at a minimum, sounds like review it, make sure the wording makes sense. Uh, I, I mean, I can try to structure words around what I, what I just took some notes on. Um, but does that make sense to, to frame up and add to our short-term recommendation list? Is that what you guys think? Yeah, I think that would make sense to me. And again, I think this is something that would be laid out, um, you know, in an, incident annex um, to the response plan um, or, you know, what that response plan component that, um, you know, is a tasking for the, for the task force. So um, I, I think this would be, you know, in multiple places and certainly I think what you're looking at with the short-term recommendation is, you know, how, how do you get to that point? What's that component for notification? Right, right. 
So, so it kind of puts out there, hopefully, a model of consistency um, as a starting point for everybody. And then there's, you know, there's that question of, you know, it sounds like is the path still through county emergency managers, which is a, a known and established path. Um, and I think what I heard is that probably remains in place. And then I think again, that that part about the recommendation of mechanisms to ensure the confidentiality of those reportings is if we add layers to that, we just need to make sure that that is clearly a critical component because as again, as just in introducing more parties to it, we just need to be careful that it doesn't. Yeah. Charles, sure. on the, the Oregon document that they shared with us, Appendix B has a lot of information about around this, when to notify, who to notify, what to report, who will be shared with, that sort of stuff. So that may be helpful as you're trying to write some of that language. Okay, and you said that's Oregon, Kevin? Yeah, the Oregon document that got okay. uh, passed out for the last yep. meeting, it was Appendix B. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay. So I think that's that's one for the near term recommendations, and then we can take a look at maybe if the longer term recommendation gets you know the wording gets massaged a little bit to, to kind of create that initial versus longer term, uh, you know, continue to grow, mature that that communication model type of an approach. Okay. Um, can't remember exactly how we got off on that, but um, any other items from the state of Oregon and Washington to to kind of add into what we've already done? Just generically, I, I really did like their document. I thought that was helpful and I could see a lot of value in a document like the one that they passed out that you would give out to all of the stakeholders, anybody that you might want to use it. Uh, had a lot of good information in it. Um, so adapting some of that for ours would be great, I think. One of the things from the conversation from kind of the, the central visibility piece I liked was, I'm pretty sure it was Oregon that said they went and got MS Isaac Albert sensors out in all their counties. Um, now, granted, I think they, they partnered with their election officials to, to implement something like that. But I think that would be kind of a, a valuable recommendation for us as well. Yeah, I had made that note too, Jeff, because you're right. I recall that maybe they got there through a conversation and through actions related to elections, right, initially. Uh, yeah, I think that's how they funded it. Now, I'm not saying we have to, the recommendation is to fund it in that avenue, but I, I think that is a worthwhile objective one might help some of those smaller counties that don't have anything at least get something um, right. and you know one it helps us have a little more visibility and awareness you know but again there's some of those yep confidentiality type things and, and just overcoming probably some perception issues with that and is i don't know so i'll just ask the question i guess um is there an existing funding mechanism or model that makes that the easiest path to get that put into place? Or was that a point in time type of situation? Or do we know? I think if I remember they were using HAVA funding, which was a grant, and I don't, I don't know, obviously larger states got more money to do things with it than, than states. And, and that was that vehicle. But I mean, there might be some others. Again, if the infrastructure bill passes, um, you know, and some of that cyber, other cybersecurity grant money, or we could look at possibly Homeland Security grant funding, recommending folks get something like that and use that vehicle. Again, that's just some possible ways. Okay. Yeah, I can speak to that just a little bit. Uh, every once in a while, the, the feds will decide to pass out some election security money, um, HAVA funds, and uh, it can be sometimes tapped into for initiatives like that. Okay, so maybe it's a. Uh... It definitely be a long 
long-term type thing. I don't think it would be <laughs> be done in six months. Cause yeah, that's what I, that's what I was saying. hundred plus I mean, counties is a bit much. Sounds like one of those pursue opportunities to die, die, die right. Yeah. Acqu- you know, acquire and, 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 and put Albert sensors into place to establish awareness where it, you know, it doesn't exist today as a long-term. Okay. I know there was also a lot of discussion with, I think, both states about just establishing that, that communication connectivity trust model with local government. Does, does that, is that just, you know, something that everybody has, it's a known thing, got to figure it out. Does, does it, does it uh, represent uh, any sort of specific call out or recommendation? I, I don't have a good feel for that, I guess, from a, you know, a whole of state type of an of an approach. Does that question make sense? Yeah, and I think Oregon mentioned they were using a, kind of the association of local IT professionals, mm-hmm. and I don't think Kansas has anything specifically that nature. I think they have a kind of a smaller grouping that's part of a national association, maybe. I can't remember what it is. Um, kind of use it, yeah. To definitely really ensure the messaging was carried at that level. And again, not necessarily the state coming down and pushing it on folks. Yeah. Um, so I thought uh, maybe kind of more general recognition and definitely making sure that localities are active in the messaging as well and not just the state. Okay. Do we, do we work any references to local government into the, uh, the short-term recommendation we were just talking about around notification then, or is that, is, is, is that going too far in terms of expectation with local government? necessarily think it's going too far and i'll kind of lean on doug a little bit from that but kind of just putting out there that you know it's recommended that you know cities work with other cities counties work with other counties and and just kind of building that cooperation i don't necessarily think there's anything wrong with that recommendation no i would say that that fits a lot of the smaller entities pretty well some of them have even just a lack of information so the more they get to know about who to ask questions or who to lean on the better off they are even the more details in some of the recommendations the better off they are really okay so that can kind of be incorporated into that that notification recommendation I'm going to have to hop off um, and start getting the, the instant coordinate or not the instant coordination collaboration subcommittee up and going uh, sure. since Al is out of the office today. So no, I think it's a great discussion. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of complexities to this that <laughs> kind of have to work through a nuances. So you know, I don't, I don't think we're wrong in any of these directions. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, maybe that kind of goes back to, as you mentioned, you know, the association of counties or league municipalities do, you know, do we encourage them to stand one up for IT specifically? Um, you know, or do we just make sure that we're constantly communicating with those type of groups, you know, or if somebody sets something up regionally that we make sure we're willing to, to kind of participate and have resources available to communicate. I, I think there's a lot of opportunity there. Okay. 
one of the other notes I had written down, um, I can't remember which state it was that was talking about this. Maybe I think we've talked about it as a group before, uh, probably in, in the context of a longer term recommendation is the notion of a potential call it mutual aid type of model. Um, you know, this, I think it was maybe Washington was talking about, uh, you know, some groups helping other groups taking over help desk types of functions, you, you know, in the heat of an incident, um, just providing more bandwidth, if you will, to, to deal with the situation at hand, where there's often very limited resources to do so. And, and I guess I kind of wrapper that into the notion of a mutual aid model of sorts. Uh, does anybody else recall that or does that make sense? before I leave. Yeah, that, I remember that. And that's something that we've actually executed within agencies, um, you know, coming in to assist after they've had some sort of issue, whether it's just a technical failure that needed coverage while folks were working the issue, et cetera. Um, but folks coming in and helping with help desk functions, et cetera. I mean, so I definitely see the, the value in those type things. Yeah. So, but with that, I unfortunately have to. So, okay. Yep. Thanks. So, do you all think? Thanks, that everyone. Would, yeah. Thanks, Jeff. That would kind of make sense, though, to be in the longer term as a longer term recommendation. Uh, you know, the the development definition of a mutual aid type of a model. That makes sense to me, Charles, as a long term goal. Okay. Yeah, and it does to me as well. Okay. Um, the other one that I heard that I think we've talked about before a couple different occasions, I just don't know what the current state is from a state perspective. And, and that is the sharing of kind of recommended contract language for entities that are establishing contracts. I think we've even gone so far as to talk about the notion of, of sharing contracts, you know, or, or yeah, leveraging um, with vendors via the sharing of contracts and, and maybe it's multiple steps, but one step is sharing of language. Maybe another step down that path is actually um, sharing within a contract structure or something. Does anybody recall that? Does that make sense? Sharing language absolutely makes sense. Uh, I don't know about the sharing of uh, the actual contracts. I don't know if that's easily doable or not. I think it's a good goal, um, but absolutely for the sharing of language, um, I think that's 100% doable and helpful. Yeah, so um, there are some state contracts out there that um, state agencies have through Department of Administration that are also open to political subdivisions. Um, I recall this discussion kind of looking at, you know, making sure those contracts were open to political subdivisions. Um, but kind of the caveat with that is those contracts aren't open to private entities. Right, I remember that discussion. So does the sharing of contract language, <clears throat> excuse me, does that already happen or should, you, you know, it happens some, but we should call it out as a recommendation? How, you know, how far do we, is it short term, is it long term? Just trying to think how we, I don't think we have anything specific to that right now. And, and that's, maybe that's not even thinking about it. Maybe that's not incident response either, right? Maybe it's another subcommittee. I, mean, I, I could see where it could fall into incident response with a pre-disaster contract. And um, I know Jeff had to leave the call and I don't want to put Cheryl on the spot, but I don't know if, if Cheryl would have any idea if anyone's contacted um, your offices um, regarding, you know, potential sample contract language um, in the past that may be able to be shared. But, um, you know, I know, County emergency managers have reached out to our office before about, you know, sample verbiage for 
um, things, you know, and if we've had something similar um, that we've done, you know, we've certainly um, been willing to share it with them. So I don't want to speak for Department of Administration, but I would think that, um, you know, similarly that could occur there. I don't know if the top is Cheryl off the top of my head, but I will dig into it and let the committee know. Okay, um, those are kind of the notes I had from the last call. Anybody else have anything? Charles, I didn't have anything to add to the list that we've already gotten and the things you brought up. I think we've got a pretty good list of uh, items as far as it goes, incident response. Okay, so I kind of captured one, just to summarize, maybe captured a short-term recommendation around, around notification, uh, making sure Jonathan helps to kind of craft that wording. Um, and then around longer term, We've got the Albert sensor recommendation, uh, mutual aid model recommendation. And then probably just a general review of, you know, anything we have in near term that there would be a corresponding long term that kind of aligns with it to, to, you know, send that message that this is not a one and done thing. It's much more of a go and grow model. And, and ensure that, you know, if there's an initial step, there's a follow-up step and maybe vice versa. Does that make sense to everybody? Just in terms of kind of packaging where we're going? That sounds great to me. And then Jonathan, not to put you on the spot, but I think what I heard and what makes sense kind of along those lines is to keep a, a you know, if we call it an incident response template of sorts, that, that would be an instrument that's more centralized, that uh, is, is handled through centralized emergency response. And the hook into that in the near term is the notification process. The actual execution of a, an incident response plan is, is more initiated and centralized uh, within that you know, existing emergency response structure. I may not have said that exactly right, but I think that's kind of what I heard. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. Okay. Um. Jeff was talking about prioritization before he left. And, and so didn't get a chance to ask him. Obviously the short term versus long term is a form of prioritization. Um, I just thinking out loud here a little bit maybe some of those near-term recommendations, do we, do we get more action oriented and directive as to next steps to make those happen? Um, I'm just trying to, maybe somebody else had a sense for when Jeff was talking about prioritization, you know, what's the, the translation of that statement look like in terms of action for us? Anybody have an idea there? It seemed like to me he was open to as much detail as we could put in there, but not necessarily do we have to drill down on uh, all of those. Um, maybe sort of a template ideas of who it might involve, who 
what it might look like, but not necessarily a full blown, here's exactly what you would do. Okay. From my perspective anyway, but it was a little unclear. Well, I, I guess at this point, I know we don't have much time. <laughs> so wanna make sure that we're definitely make the best use of time and what we have left. It, it kind of feels like to me that it's taking today's discussion. It's maybe looking back again um, at the, the, the documents from the state of Washington, the state of Oregon, and then it's taking our draft and refining that draft to become what we envision as, as our next and final deliverable for now. That to me at a high level are the next steps. Um, and just trying to think of how to most effectively kind of divide that up and make it happen. Um, does it make sense for everybody to, to take the draft? I think we all have a copy of the draft to take the draft and um, just thinking, I mean, I mean, I can take a shot at, at wording these recommendations that we've talked about today, getting those back to Allie, maybe having a red line to the initial draft and then everybody uh, working from that baseline to incorporate additional thoughts. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes, I think so, Charles. Just trying to think through, you know, the path that's that's going to be most efficient, most effective to get there and not have rework and people stepping on each other and not working off the same baseline document. I think we need to get these recommendations in there, kind of look at what we've got, um, cross check it. Um, I don't know that we're adding a lot of length to be candid to what we've already done. We're refining it. So I think that's kind of a checkpoint back with Jeff and, and Allie maybe to see if that's consistent with that, what the other subcommittees are doing. Um, Cause I think, you know, again, from an instant response perspective, it's a starting point. So we're not kind of trying to create a, a self-sustaining decentralized instant response model for all entities to say, here you go, here's your playbook for an instant, right? But we're, we're putting initial steps out there. We're keeping it centralized for now, um, more along those lines. So I'll, I'll try to craft wording on these. Um, maybe I'll just send it back to this group so that you all can comment, um, you know, and then Allie can add it to the document, assuming she probably has the master. Cheryl, you may know, may not know. I, I think that's probably true. Allie probably has the master. Yes, Allie is the um, central point for everybody to send their information. Yeah. Yep, that's what I thought. Okay, so what else? If you know, kind of putting that out there as an approach, next two or three steps to get us to a a draft final, to call it that. Yeah, with the short amount of time we have left, I think that's our best approach is have you draft something up, give it to Allie, she can disseminate it out to all of us. We can see if there's anything we think should be added, taken out, edited a little, wording wise, all that. Yep. Okay. All there's right. not Sounds a lot of good. time. So there's not. That's what I say. I I, you know, don't want to cut a meeting short today and then wish we had time later, but I think we kind of gotta get uh a, a next version of baseline document created, go from there, refine it. That's what gets us to the finish line. Okay, makes sense to me. Anything else that you all think we need to do now? 
uh, today on this call. I do not have anything else. Nope. All right, Jonathan, Doug. I don't have anything else. Okay. I think we had a lot of good discussion. Okay, would agree with that. So I'll take a shot at wording, get that over to Allie, probably copy you all uh, as well. So feel free to chime in and modify it because my words will not be perfect. I know that in advance. All right, thanks everybody.